Welcome everybody to Office Hours presented by School Rubric. This is our final episode of 2020, so we are extremely thrilled to be with you here today. So let's start us off with some introductions because this is going to be a lightning fast 30 minutes. My name is Pav Wander and I make up just under 50% of the Staff Room podcast. Uh, we've got, and The Drive, we've got uh, a, a bunch of friends here with us today. And so we're going to go ahead and introduce everybody. Beside me here is my co-host to The Drive and the Staff Room podcast, Che Cheney. Hey, how are you? I am great and so excited to be here with all my friends. Just beneath me is Tracy Browder, and she's the host of the Intelligogy podcast. Hi, Tracy. Hey, everybody. Hi, Pav. So glad to be here rocking the holiday season. That's right. And just diagonal to me down here, that's Charles Williams, and he is host of the Counter Narrative podcast. So hello, Charles. How are you? Hello, hello. Thank you for having me back. I'm so happy to uh, be here with you guys once again. We're thrilled to have you. We're, we're, we make a great team, I think. So um, before we get started with the conversation tonight, uh, let's, let's do a quick check-in because uh, we, are, we are talking about wellness tonight and, uh, and how we are um, you know, promoting our own wellness over the holidays and not just the holidays, but all the time. So how is everybody starting off their holidays? Um, Charles, why don't you go first? Yeah, so um, you know, I'm super excited about the holidays. Friday was our last day of work, and so you know, had it some of days off. But of course, Friday at like four o'clock, got an email from the district about some things they want during the break. So that's not so cool. Uh, but you know, I've been spending some time, you know, with the family, taking care of things, last minute shopping. So things have been great. Trying to practice those wellness tips that we're going to talk about tonight. It's, it's a little bit challenging, you know, when we still have to get ready for, you know, Christmas coming up and there's last minute things that we need to be doing, but uh, glad that you are trying. Tracy, how about yourself? How are you starting off the holidays? I'm enjoying it. it it's it's good to just be home and, and not going back and forth to work. I love my babies, but it's so good to just be immersed in family and, uh, they are, they're amazing. They're taking care of everything while I push and punch out my first book. And I'm really excited about that. So um, that wellness piece is really important. It takes the whole village to make it happen. Indeed it does. And that's so great to hear that you're getting some time to work on the book. So that's absolutely very necessary. Che, buddy, how's it going? Uh, we haven't spoken so long. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I'm looking forward to picking up some tips because all I've been doing since I got off work was cleaning, 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 and then a little bit more cleaning. And then there was still stuff that still needed to be cleaned from four months of being at work. So I'm looking forward <laughs> to that. And as for Charles, um, no pressure, but there's pressure. Like if you don't perform today, like I don't know if I'm extending an invite. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to say, che, che, you and I were laughing because he's like, thanks for having me back. I'm like, dude, you're, you're, you're a part of this. Hey, no hey. Just, just humble, just humble. We are family here. And so, yes, it, it is a very special episode tonight. Um, rather than having questions fielded to us from all around the world, we thought it would be a really nice way for us to go out of 2020 just sharing some of our wellness tips with you today. So we each have uh, curated a list of uh, two each, two tips each that we are going to share with everybody today. And we're going to talk about those tips a little bit and uh, you know, discuss a little bit about how we are practicing those tips, um, how sometimes those tips can be a little bit challenging in our day to day and, uh, and you know, just have that little bit of back and forth discussion. So we hope that everybody enjoys some of what we have to share and we'll see what kind of conversation develops from, uh, from tonight's amazing episode. Let's get started with tip number one and uh, I don't know. Let's let's queue up that randomizer to see uh, see who's up first. Boop boop beep, producers. Let's go. (laughs) 
All right. So it looks like that was uh, that was my tip. So my tip number one. That's right. It was uh, mindfulness with intentionality, preparing for the fight. And uh, I thought about this one um, because a couple of weeks ago I was uh, at my Muay Thai class and I was training with my partner. And before we we got started with the class. I was wrapping my hands in, in order to prepare for the class. And at the end of it, it took me about five minutes. And at the end of that, uh, my partner said, wow, you really uh, wrap your hands with a lot of precision because I just, I just kind of wrap up and then, and then I go. And, uh, and I said to her, you know, something that since I started Muay Thai, it, it was almost like wrapping my hands became a very meditative process for me. It was, it was something, it was, I don't know if it was the ritual. I don't know if it was, I had some nerves about participating in the class. So I was trying to, you know, procrastinate and delay. Um, or, or if it was just, no, I really need to make sure that I'm doing this right. But whatever it was, it became like a five minute process that I would engage in, in order to prepare my mind for what was to come. And so um, I became very intentional with that practice. I used that time to think about how I'm going to act during that, uh, that class, uh, think about the moves that I've been practicing, think about you know, how to defend uh, and block uh, when we're sparring. And so it, it really became something to, to really um, set, set my mind right just as I entered this thing. So it became meditative, meditative and uh, very intentional. So that's my first tip that intentionality preparing for the fight uh tracy do you have anything like that that you do before any like a ritual or something that that you really are very intentional with yeah but i i gotta go back and say pav as you were talking and you're going through the process of rapping and you were like i don't know if it's this i don't know if it's that you know what came to me is you're protecting yourself you know, it's it's that self-care piece and you're taking care of yourself. So that intentionality is it, it ties in so wonderfully to what you were saying. For me, it's more of going into my quiet time, digging deep into my faith and just really grounding and anchoring myself really helps me focus and and gets me to a place of peace. Oh yeah, that's you know that that it does do that that peacefulness. It mm -hmm. comes from um, perhaps it's the ritual, perhaps it's that meditative uh, that meditative piece that comes with it. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, che, Charles. You know, I was just yeah. going to say, and, I, and I'm sure that Che would agree with me, right? We have routines, right? Especially in our in our one of our favorite sports, baseball, right? I mean, we have these routines. Because you can't just get up and jump in, right, and hope for the best. You have to get ready. And whether that's showing up early, whether it's meditating, whether it's like walking through the building, whatever it is, right, you just have to be prepared. And so that way you are ready and set to go. And I, I love the fact that Tracy kind of tied that double entendre in there, right? As you're wrapping yourself up, not only are you getting ready to fight, right, but you're protecting yourself and saying, hey, I'm ready to jump into the fray, ready to be the best that I can be for whatever's coming at me. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, indeed. Absolutely. Uh, che, did you want to add anything to that? Only that I'm very lucky that you tap taped your hand so we didn't see what finger you were extending towards me because it reminded me of when we film episodes of, you know, the hand gestures you give me just before we dive into the dialogue. So, oh, we're lucky we're taping that up. But you know, piggybacking if you, if you on what... Slow, if you slow the, the video down... <laughs> if you're going to watch it slow motion, check out what finger path gives me. Um, I love tying into what everything you talked about. I actually, rather than my own wellness, I actually thought about my teaching practice. I always thought those 10 minutes before the bell are probably the most important 10 minutes, not because I'm rushing to do something because I've done all my things and now. And now I need my two songs or I want my 10 minutes of quiet time. I really value that 10 minutes before that first bell uh, to sort of get myself calm, get myself prepared. And even if I'm not prepared, I think I would rather take that 10 minutes of calm to just sort of visualize how the morning's going to go rather than saying rushing to do a last minute photocopy or rushing to cut out a last shape. No, give me my 10 minutes of just peace and calm. And I know I'll be in a better headspace to deliver the lesson and the learning that I want to try to do. So that's what I picked up from, from you guys sharing those, uh, those wisdoms. Perfect. Thank you. And thanks everybody for that great discussion. Now that we are prepared for this fight, let's move on to tip number two. 
Oh, what's a wellness uh, tip I'll give? Well, I like going out there for jogs. Just finished at 11K, feeling good, feeling energized, and ready to take on the rest of my day. That's my wellness tip. Awesome. And you have been doing fantastic with that running. Che, take us into, tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, first, don't fact check me. Uh, I said 11K, and we're going to stick with that. That was 11K. <laughs> I don't want anyone saying, hey, wait, did you only do three? <laughs> you wouldn't know. Um, but you know what? I, I find the running to be therapeutic. I find the running to be a great escape. Uh, I don't have to run really fast. They don't have to set any records. And you know what? If the running's not going great, maybe I'm just going to walk. But it's it's a connect with nature. It's a, it's a connection with fresh air. It's also uh, just being by yourself for a few minutes. And then while yourself, maybe I'll listen to some music. Maybe I'll make a phone call and run. Maybe I'll just listen to, to my heartbeat. But I always love going out there running, sort of connecting with nature and just letting it flow with what I feel inclined to do while I'm running. And I don't necessarily got to check my watch and say, whoa, I only did that in five and a half or 613. As long as I'm out there running and my mind is just connecting and, and doing something that's comfortable, then at the end of the run, that was a good run. <clears throat> 14K, by the way. 14. <laughs> Shh, don't rewind. All right, Charles, what you got on that? Let's go. You know, I am not a runner. I really am not. So I, every time you guys you know, have these- You know, like, we know you're not a runner. <laughs> you, you know, these run and rants, I'm like, can we do like a walk and wonder? Like, I, I have no idea. You know, but uh, I love getting outside. And, and But the, the downside of living in Chicago is I hate the cold. So like, I have what, like three months where I'm outside? But yeah, definitely, Chad, I love that idea. Getting out, whether it's with someone or by yourself, but just- there's something about nature and reconnecting. So I love this wellness tip. And maybe I'll brave the cold and try to do an 11K. <laughs> My man. <laughs> it is tough. It is very tough to get out there in the cold. And, and I've done it once or twice. And I don't love it. Um, I like to run out in the in the warmth. I've done it a few times. And, and I do intend to do it a little bit more. Just kind of bundle up a little bit and get out there. Uh, but great tip, Che, and uh, and and really great that you're able to maintain that and and stick to it because I think that that's very important. Um, thanks everybody for that discussion. Why don't we jump to the next tip? Hey, honey, how are you? What? Oh my goodness! I have the best husband in the whole wide world. You're bringing pizza home for dinner. Oh, thank you. I have so much to tell you. It was a rough day. Oh my goodness, I appreciate that. I was thinking I'd have to come home and cook dinner on top of everything else that happened. I love you. I love that, Tracy. So supportive, so wonderful. Tell us a little bit more about your tip. We're going to get pizza after this, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's really important that you make sure you identify and have that internal source of support. Um, but, but first you have to start with, you know, when we're in the trenches, it's really important to have people who are outside of the trenches that have that fresh perspective that don't have the same weight and the burdens and the stresses that can really pick us up when we're down. So that's what my husband, that's what my home, that that's what it's all about is, Baby, let me just take this off your plate. Just, just, I come into this space of peace and later after we've cooked and everybody's talked and laughed, then we can talk about the day. But it's that fresh perspective. And that fresh perspective, it kind of goes, I'm gonna backpedal a little bit because that's my external support. Let's talk about the internal supports really quickly. Oh my gosh, yes. You know, we were at school today. Remember when you and I were talking? Yeah, yeah, oh my goodness. This is just so sad and we're all going through so much. You know, when 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 you're in the trenches, it's you guys know the weight of COVID, global pandemic, everything we're going through right now. It's really important to have those people um, who are in the trenches with you that you don't have to set up the whole story. They get it and 
The thing is, you have to be selective about who that is on your team, because when you're sharing, when you're stressed and when you have those burdens, do you want somebody who's going to continue to pull you down with negativity? Or do you want somebody who's going to pick you up with encouragement, that light, that joy, looking through a different set of lenses? So I'm I'm really happy to have my internal and external supports. And I hope if, if we all don't have that, we all need to get that. Yeah, you know, I one of the things that I've been so lucky for over the past couple of months is is to indeed have those uh, internal and external supports. They've they've all offered such uh, important parts to my life to help me cope with, uh, you know, sometimes those feelings of loneliness or, or you know just uh, not having someone around. Um, and, and just to be able to talk and talk out your problems. So um, that is a very important tip. Thank you for sharing that, Tracy. Um, we've got one more. Oh, sorry, Che, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, that's okay. I just wanted to jump in. When we talk about uh, external places to sort of find that, that connection, that peace, I then would say challenge yourself to be an external source for someone else. And more than just saying, oh, I'm here for you, that, that's not being there for someone. More than saying, oh, my door's open. No, your door's open doesn't, is, doesn't just mean your door's open. It really means go out and, and talk to people. And it can be something as casual as a coffee or as casual as a hello, what are you doing? Or as pointing to saying, oh, you look like you're having a, a tough day. You want to just let something out on me. So really work on being an external source and not just with those trivial things like, I'm here for you. Well, what, what does that mean? That, that puts the onus on the person that needs the struggle to come to you. No, if you feel like you're in that place where you can be an external source for someone, then be, be an active external source for someone. So I just wanted to piggyback on that. Hey, hey Tracy, really quick. What kind of pizza are you guys having? <laughs> let me know, let me know, let me know. I'm on my I'm way. Curious. I'm okay. curious too. Talk about boring. I don't eat meat for minus cheese. Everybody else, they love the surprises and they pile it on thick. <laughs> <laughs> cheese We're pizza is very sticks. popular in my house too. <laughs> Yes, that's that's very important. Thank you for sharing that, Tracy. And uh, you know, as we are approaching this uh, halfway point of our really quick show that goes by so fast, we just want to welcome everybody for joining us today. We've got um, some amazing uh, viewers here, and yes, we've got Teacher Fit, Second Arrow. Uh, everybody is is in with us. So thank you for joining us today, and uh, we really appreciate you tuning in and leaving us uh, the comments because we can see everything and we love all of this feedback. And we're really excited to go back and rewatch the episode and read everything along the way. So thank you again for joining us. We got one more tip in this first round before we move on to round number two. Bring it. Oh, I know we've all felt this one. Charles, tell us a little bit more about the act of unplugging. Yeah, you know what? I, I think it is so important in this day and age, right? I, everything, right? Even right now, every we're just sitting on our devices, on our computers, on our phones, and even more so now than ever. And it, we just have to take a moment to disconnect, to unplug, and go do whatever it is that you need to do, right? Whether you take a walk, you go clean up the house, you I don't care what it is, but you just need to step away. I was telling someone the other day, right? When we used to go to meetings, I would go to meeting one, I would drive over to meeting two, right? But there's that gap in between. Now there's no gaps, right? We just schedule meeting, 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 meeting. And we're just sitting and staring at a screen. We have to unplug. It's okay because when you open that computer back up, when you turn that phone back on, the world is still gonna be there. I mean, you may have a ton of emails, but the world is still gonna be there ready for you to tackle it. So please, yep. whatever you do, when you're feeling stressed, because again, you're no good for anyone at that point, go ahead and turn it off for a minute. Take 10, 15 minutes, right? Refresh, recharge, and then jump back in. Yeah, Charles, I have to agree with you. We have to do it at some point. I find it very difficult to, um, but Tracy, how do you unplug? Oh boy, you know, I was just thinking the other day, I really want to challenge my whole family to let's go out. And we always go look at Christmas lights, right? But I want us to go look at Christmas lights and I want us to leave these things at home. Nobody bring a phone. 
one phone in case of an emergency and it goes in the glove compartment. So when I say dis disconnect this time, put it down, Che. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't document it, did it really happen? Yeah. Oh, it's documented. <laughs> and, and yeah, are, we, are, are we living our lives to show the world or are we living our lives to be in the moment? What are we doing? Yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree with you. It is something that's tough to do, um, especially for Che and myself lately. Um, but but it's something we have to. We have to be able to unplug sometimes. Um, all right. So that was Che. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and I, I have to tell Duran, right quick, he just posted, Duran, if you do this, if you truly unplug, I want to hear about it. Let me know how you do. Let me know what you let go of. Oh, I always find the Pat. You know we've had this where we're sitting on our phones trying to keep up with everything, and then you feel you've wasted two hours, but you haven't done anything of any point of any real value. And so when Charles talks about disconnecting, when you disconnect, it brings you back to that space, really focused on, on what you want to do. I find I don't disconnect, but then I haven't accomplished anything. I'm just spinning around endlessly, and I just want to piggyback with what you said. So many great comments coming, and I would be remiss if I didn't talk about uh, teacher fit. And second arrow, because if you struggle to find sort of avenues and places to do and things to ideas, you can check them out. They have lots of resources for being athletic, for meditation, uh, because we are not the gatekeepers of wellness. We're just, you know, four teachers or three teachers and an administrator giving you our insights on, uh, on some wellness. But there are all kinds of great resources. So I had to plug them because, you know, even big supporters of everything that uh, we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And so please, if you've got some of your own wellness tips, share them in the comments with us. Uh, as they pop up, we'd love to be able to talk about them and uh, and discuss some of those wellness tips. Of course, these are just some of the ones that we've put together that have helped us. Um, and, and as we talk about these tips, we've got another round of them to go. So let's get to round two of the wellness Ding. tips. And we're starting with Tracy's. Tracy, I know we're talking about self-reflection, but can we first talk about that fireplace? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, loving my fireplace. Oh yeah, it's such a it's such a peaceful spot. And that's the thing when we talk about that self-analysis, that introspection. You know, like when I when I was talking about writing a minute ago, I can't be productive in my creativity in clutter. So clear your space in, in order to really dig deep into your soul and, 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 and anchor yourself in what are my goals? What am I doing? What is my purpose? What is it that I enjoy? What is it that I'm doing that I don't enjoy? What do I need to move off of my plate? I can say no. What can I say yes to? If I say no to something, I can say yes to something else. And maybe that something else is myself. So that whole thing about being quiet and, and that self-reflection, you know, the journal that you saw, it's actually a goals journal. And I started writing in it in November of last year. And in November of last year, I said several things that I'm actually doing right now. So it's, it, you know, if I took pictures and showed you, it gives me goosebumps when I go back and look. So being committed to a journal, it's like an accountability partner and you get to go back and reflect and not only see your growth, but, but see where you need to grow. What didn't you accomplish? Why didn't you accomplish it? And it goes back to what do I need to move off my plate? What do I need to say no to? I love hey, that. That's my tip. That was your tip? No, I agree. And, and that's exactly that, right? You need to be able to take a look and say what's working, what isn't working, right? This is one of the things I talk about with leadership all the time is instead of just rushing forward and trying to say, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, right? Take that moment, slow things down, right? I don't understand why there's such a rush to get everything done right, right now, right? Mm -hmm. To slow things down and to say, hey, what's working, what's not working, right? And not just reflect by yourself, but sometimes as a team, and this is what I have to do with my team, sit down and say, hey guys, what's working? What's not working, right? Reflect together. That way you could, like you said, right? Just 
kind of get rid of all that stuff that isn't and say, let's focus on what's important. That way we can continue moving forward. Yeah, I love that. Uh, Che, I know that you and I, we reflect quite a bit with each other. Um, And so uh, do you, do you keep, I know that we each have our own notebooks and uh, we, we speak daily about, there you go. There you go. Do you record, do you record your reflections? Do you do what Tracy does and record goals? Uh, I love to goal set because I learned a lot of that from academic mindset, it, connecting goals to your vision so you can really know which goals are the one, like as Tracy said, clearing the play. It's good to know what goals are the truly important ones to the tasks that are really that you've designated to have the most important. So I love that component. I love to jot notes down of just wisdom because in the moment I think, oh, I'll never forget that. But then all I'll remember is the moment that I knew I'd never forget, but I don't remember what it was. So I love yeah. to jot down the wisdoms here. So it's, it's a very random book, but it suits sort of my, my mindset. I know I can just draw and, and, and piece it here. So I like to have a book of randomness as what I call it. And then that randomness makes sense to me as I go back through it because I, I remember the aha moments that generated the, the note taken. Yeah, and I do also want to comment about uh, Fawns just rent, left a great comment about uh, celebrating those small victories. You can you can go back and see what those uh, victories are through your journaling and and really be able to celebrate them. So thank you, uh, thank you, Alfonso, for that amazing comment. Um, I think Che, we're up to your tip next. Boom! Let's do it. Wellness tip number two. cup of tea always does the trick so is that how the gym guy brings his energy levels way down is it sitting down uh, for a cup of tea uh, I said tea but really it was just three scoops of pre-workout so I wouldn't have to go to bed <laughs> um, I think the tea is more symbolic of a little bit like Fonz was talking about the small things just enjoy them. So, so often we sort of, everyone has a tea or a, a smoothie or a beverage in the morning or in the evening to get them going, but do they take the time or do, or do we have the time to truly enjoy it for five minutes or six minutes or seven minutes? And we know in the school year, we have a cup of coffee, but it's rushed and you're like, like it's a power sip, but you're making sure what time it is. Just have those, five, and it might only be five minutes, but if you can just sit and have that tea to yourself, that coffee to yourself, that smoothie to yourself, just gives you your you time and it allows you to truly appreciate something that we just take for granted all, all the other times. Tracy, what do you think about that? I know it's no pizza, it's no pizza, but still, you know, a nice cup of tea. Well, for me, it's like cocoa. It's a refreshing glass of water. And I, I love water. My kids look at me like, how much water are you going to drink? But, but you know, do soaking in what you enjoy and and che you said it best like stop doing everything else and just be in the moment you know it goes back to like what lisa and liv were saying that music that rest um we can play music enjoy our drink and rest and do it all and just really ah let go of stuff you know just let go of the stuff and and live in this piano oh my goodness i mean just Playing music with her eyes closed. Can you imagine? I'd be sipping tea just sitting there watching. Right, Shay? <laughs> I'm on my way. Live like start playing. I'm coming. <laughs> we should do it on Facebook Live. <laughs> yes, I would actually. That would be very enjoyable. Liv, I think you got to play for us. Yes. <laughs> we need that time to unplug. <laughs> with Lydia. <laughs> That's right. I think we are up to Charles's next uh, next tip as well. So to be the best, you must, wait a second, be the first or last at work? Yeah, no. Uh, work harder than anyone? No. Never fail? Come on, who came up with these? Never show that you're tired? I think not. How about this? To be the best, you must simply be your Be your best. I love that video. And actually, Charles, I'd like to use that in my in my classroom. Absolutely. If, uh, absolutely. Yeah, it was lovely. Tell us a little bit more about that. 
Well, first of all, I decided to use post-its as a tribute to uh, to Che. Um, <laughs> but really, it's it's we live in this weird world, right, where we always seem to be in competition. And and I remember a quote saying that that right comparison is the thief of joy. And that's it, right? If we're always comparing ourselves to other people, if we're always trying to say, hey, I'm doing this, but it's not as good as that person, you're never going to be satisfied. You're never going to be happy because you're always in competition with other people. So instead of trying to be the best, according to everybody else's standards, just simply be your best. You know, I shared that with the podcast this year, right? I mean, I was excited once I hit 1,500 downloads. I was like, woo! Right. By no means is it huge, but I didn't even have a show last year. Right. This was a, 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 something I thought about. So it's like, you know what? Yeah. You know, I'm doing so much better and I'm just going to continue trying to be the best person that I can be. And as long as I do that, that is all that matters. You know, I think in this case uh, and cases like this for myself and Che, it was sort of the same. In this case, ignorance is sometimes bliss. You know, as if it's better that you don't know what other people are doing, because that way you can really focus on what you're doing and set your own goals. And really, your only competition is yourself. So I really like that that goal. And uh, yeah, encouraging our kids live, love encouraging my kids to do today's best may look different from day to day, but that's OK. What a wonderful tip and something so great to give our students in class. All right, guys, we've got one more tip and I believe it's mine. So let's go out on this one. How do I get some wellness in my day? I love to read or listen to a great book. Perfect while driving, doing the dishes or staring at the ceiling and just listening. You know, I've always loved to read. Reading has, since I was young, has always been a real escape for me, but time is always the issue. So being able to sit down and sit and read is sometimes a little bit of a challenge because I want a half an hour, I want 45 minutes, I want an hour. So something that I've started doing is while I'm doing other things, I'll listen to a book and I'll keep my notebook handy. And as soon as I hear something that resonates with me, I quickly jot it down. And, uh, and I've been able to get through so many amazing books this way in the past couple of years. So just today I was uh, listening to Dare to Lead by Brene Brown uh, while I was wrapping Christmas presents. And, and it was a great thing to just have on in the background so that I'm, I'm absorbing some knowledge, but I'm also getting my chores done as well at the same time. So it's that little bit of multitasking that I found has been so uh, good for my wellness because I'm getting a little bit of that knowledge, a little bit of that thing that's rejuvenating my heart, but at the same time, I'm getting things done so that I feel accomplished as well. So is there anything like that, uh, Che, that you have, Charles, Tracy, anything that you do? I got to piggyback on the audio book and say, I've always, when I read it, it doesn't seem to have the impact. When I listen to an audio book, it tends to resonate more because it's just like the power of, of the poignant statement really hits me. Like I remember reading um, Policing Black Lives this summer and I struggled a little bit through the text. And so I didn't feel I was getting as much, but when I listened to it in the audio version, like I was just mesmerized, like the right words, the right tone, uh, the, the right frequency and the message just resonated rather than me sort of scurrying through text, almost like I'm trying to memorize thing or find what's important. I always find that audio just it hits home the audio version so i always tell my students hey i'm reading and by reading i mean i'm listening say i had to, i'd have to agree i don't know if you've ever heard like like ibram kenny right like mm -hmm. when when it comes through i think that there's something powerful right there, there's all that meaning inside the author that when they do their own audio books like it all comes through right and so yeah you're right it's not just reading words on a page anymore you're getting that raw feeling and emotion and you're like huh yeah, it's hitting much more deeper right now. Trace, maybe you should consider doing that. Well, I, I'm smiling so big. Do you know what I did for the first time? It like it hit me today. I'm like, why don't I open up Google Docs? Why don't I open up GarageBand 
And why don't I, instead of typing my book, like I'm talking, so it could be a podcast episode, it could be audio books, and, and you're hearing that passion. Now, when it gets to editing, things might all move around, but but you're right. I, I told my husband, I'm like, this is insane. But I felt like I came up with this new brand, brand new idea. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, you know what? It's new to me, and it's cool. It is actually, it's a very, it's a very great thing to do. Now I'm not a great orator, but uh, my counterpart over here is. And, uh, and this is, this is, you know, a really great way that he writes uh, I find it difficult to do that. But, uh, but Che likes to speak his writing, which is, which is really cool to me. And I love that. And so if you're able to do that, amazing, because you get those thoughts right from here, right onto the page. And you don't have to use these middlemen over here to do the work. So that's uh, that's fantastic. I loved all the discussion with this. I, actually, I've loved all the discussion we've had during this entire episode today. Um, unfortunately, it just goes by way too fast. I know that we could talk for hours and hours on all of these incredible tips. So just before we head out today, um, I'm going to throw it out to everybody to give us some final thoughts, maybe, you know, something you're looking forward to for 2021, anything that you've got on the go, and just anything that you'd like to share. So final thoughts. Charles, I'll start with you. Yeah, you know what? I'm just really looking forward to coming into this new year with, with all of this momentum that we've been carrying forward. You know, 2020 has been an insane year, right? I mean, but the upside is, and, and this is the truth, right? No matter how bad it is, there's always good in it, right? You could always find the good. And so there have been some tremendous moments this year, and I'm looking forward to carrying those forward, you know, participating in discussions like this, right? Continuing to work on the podcast and everything else. I mean, even remote learning, my students and staff have been rocking it out. So I'm so very proud of you, if any of you guys are listening, and I'm looking forward to carrying that into the next school year and finishing just as strong, if not stronger than as we started. Amazing. Thank you, Charles. Tracy, any last words heading out of this year? I'm going to just pull from what Charles said. You know, that whole this 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 space of recharging and resting to go back and be even better than we were before. So when we go back, let's try to put the past behind us. And I know it's heavy, but we can do so much more if we don't have the weight of then and we have now in the future in front of us. Love that. Love that so much. Focus on what we have in front of us. Che. Take us out with some wise, wise words. I will bring this back to wellness. And I would say, what is your gauge? Your gauge is merely how do you feel at the end of your day when you've engaged in your activity? So it's not about I got to run 11 or I have to run four or I jogged 3K and I had to walk a K. The only gauge the only measure of any value is how do you feel at the end of the day and so if you just stepped out onto your porch and had a, a great cup of tea that really lifted your spirits boom that's a four plus if i had to evaluate it or give it assessment but but i think a lot of us talk about that comparativeness there's no comparison and even if you challenge yourself or it's a competition with yourself the only gauge is how do i feel at the end of the day and no matter how small you may feel the activity you've done is that's irrelevant. If you have a good feeling about uh, yourself, then then the practice was good practice and continue it. Perfect. You know, I think I have to piggyback on that a little bit. And, uh, you know, we want that little bit of endorphin rush, that little bit of something that gives you that feel good feeling. So whatever it is that you need to do to bring yourself to a little bit more health, a little bit more wellness, take the time to do it and really enjoy what it is you're doing to take care of yourself. And I think that these are some fantastic tips and some wonderful ways for us to get ready for the new year and take care of ourselves, not just as educators, but as human beings, we're living through a very difficult time right now. And so we have to do what we can to thrive and survive. So Thank you everybody for joining us today. We really appreciate everyone joining us, commenting, liking. Uh, we'd love it if you could share you know, the office hours with everybody. We love doing these shows. Um, this is, like I said, the last one for 2020. And in the new year, we are hoping to be back weekly on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So thank you for tuning in to School Rubrics Office Hours. Happy New Year, everybody, and we wish you a wonderful holiday break. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye, guys.
Thank you for watching Office Hours presented by School Rubric. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we highlight voices and perspectives of educational leaders across the globe. To stay in the know with our latest upcoming panels, interviews, tutorials, and more, make sure that you follow us on social media or visit us at schoolrubric.com. Thank you.